What's going on guys? This is Empty Box and this is Automobile Easter 2 with the Formula USA Generation 2, the 1998 Champ Cars. We're going to be doing a 20 minute race thereabouts, 20 laps, at Salvador with AI turned up. Going to be having a blast using the skin pack that's out there. You can find that down in the description. One of the great car track sim combinations in sim racing in my opinion. Uh, I don't know why I like it, but I know why I like it, but I, it doesn't necessarily make as much sense. I should not have done nearly as many laps as I've done here over the years because it's not actually a particularly great circuit, but at low-key somehow with these cars in particular is fantastic. It's because it wants to be Surfer's Paradise. So anyways, going to talk about update 1.3.1. Let's change the cars a little bit as well as uh, the little grip. Uh, forgiveness uh, difficulty discussion because apparently I accidentally waded into that one with some of my comments and my initial impressions video so anyways on to the the race well I've got some bad news my shifter has given up the ghost it will no longer downshift sad sad moments will we survive will we survive yes we will survive hallelujah so I will say, if there's one thing that absolutely sucks about this track, it is the rolling start. In fairness, you're going from too wide right into a single file chicane. It's always going to be a mess. I mean, there's no space at all. So anyways, just a matter of housekeeping. This is version 1.3.1, which we'll go ahead and talk about a little bit later on. There's been a couple of changes aerodynamically to the tires as well as auto blip has been turned off and we do got the stop and go socks with the pedal cam going on here today and we are going to go ahead and take this position right here guarantee it AI is just way too timid on lap one and heavy braking zones in fairness they got me at the chicane they cheese me at the chicane so I'm going to cheese them at the hairpin and it, we'll just call it fair. But I will go ahead and talk about the update a little bit later on, as well as uh, some things relating to the update and discussion. But I do want to go ahead and talk about the AI settings and all that stuff here, as I usually do. AI is set to 105 difficulty, 75 aggression. We are using a medium track rubber setting. Of course, we are driving the Swift. If you were a long time viewer from back in the day where I actually made videos on a regular basis. I did a video with the uh, Kart Factor, Kart Extreme, can't even remember what it's called at the time, it's definitely Kart Extreme I want to say, from GameStock Kart 2013 or, or GameStock Kart Extreme with this car around this track way back when and had a blast with it. It's kind of the updated remastered version. I have to say, these cars, brilliant. This track, brilliant. Put the two together, super brilliant. This is definitely a, a tier one combination in sim racing for me, because it is so addictive. It's a track that, you know, I, I, I have no relation to, never heard of it. It's just a track that exists in Reza Studios games. <laughs> it, it's totally stupid looking from like a trap map trap map perspective and like you just okay so we're gonna have a hairpin we have a couple of chicanes like a high speed foot to the floor sweeper and then we're gonna go ahead and have this you know, fast corner that switches back on exit right next to the walls yeah you know it's kind of one of those things you'd look at it'd be very easy to overlook but that right there makes such a heap of the lap and then you also get the chicanes, which uh, there's something about chicanes on street circuits. You know, this, this track, as I always see it, and as I call it, it's basically like a, it's as close as we're going to get to Surfer's Paradise. You know, that's a track I desperately want to see one day, done in modern quality version. I know Reason Studios is never going to do it because no one's going to do it because it's a stupid amount of work to do it. And it is one of those tracks that, while well, yes, it's well known. There's not like substantial demand where it's gonna be like the 
when the laser scan versions of the Nurburgring started showing up a few years ago, where it's like, oh, big deal, we gotta check this out, you know? But, you know, it's got that same type of thing where you're just blasting between chicanes, and therefore it works with these cars, even though you might initial impressions be, hey, uh, this is just not a good idea. This, these cars probably don't belong here. But the good thing is these cars, you know, because they are what they are, they're super adaptable. They fit basically any track you can throw at them. Actually, earlier today, I did some racing with these things at uh, Jerez, which I apologize for the pronunciation, but I'm a Midwesterner from the United States. You don't want to hear me try because it's just going to be even worse. Trust me. But uh, you know, an absolute blast <laughs> driving these cars around there. Those cars really just fit so well around that track. So I highly recommend that one. Give it a go. Uh, anything you throw at them, they can do, you know? They were designed for for everything from 240 mile an hour speedways, and I guess I should point out 240 mile an hour average speedways. <laughs> it's, uh, I, re I remember distinctly there was a forum thread over at iRacing where some guy they were just doing a forum game in the off-topic section. And uh, if I'm remembering this correctly, it was like, what was the fastest speed you've ever done in a real car on track? And people are just, you know, listing their experiences. And then I believe, I want to say is Richie Hearn just kind of did the mic drop. He's like posted in there. One of, the, one of the guys that drove the cars back in the day was like, yeah, I did 263 at Fontana. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, you win. <laughs> In the draft with the Hanford device, like, yeah, sounds about right. I'll believe it. Looking at the dashboard and just seeing, yeah, that's a, that's a big number right there. <laughs> Whoa, we are we're moving. We're doing dragster speeds with turns. Yeah, I don't, I don't care how uh, how much people want to dog on oval racing. Like that's. That's madness. It's madness. But where were we? Where were we? Yeah, a little sidetrack there. That was one of those those form threads that I'll never never forget about though, because it was just like uh boom. But, you know, from, from tracks like that all the way down to, you know, tight street circuits in the middle of cities and, and stuff like that, you know. You got street fighting, you got full-on open warfare on ovals. You know, it's, it's the reason why they're glory days, right? But let's go ahead and talk about the update a little bit. So first of all, auto blip's been turned off, which is a nice, nice simple little fix. And then there also have been updates to the aerodynamics to increase the amount of downforce drop off with yaw. So basically as you get the car more sideways, you will end up losing more downforce, which I think this is the, the big change with the update. And it really helps to address one of the key issues I had with the car uh, prior to this update. Which is the fact that there would be times where you'd get the car into a spin. Like, I'm not even talking about a slide. We're talking full-on spin, you know. You're 40 degrees sideways. The car is, is bouncing all around. Like, you clearly done screwed up. But you were able to save the car, you know, back from what should have been too far gone. And the car would just act like nothing even happened. And that change seems to really have helped fix that. As well as make the front of the car a little bit more predictable. When you get stuff like that going on where you just get in the power too hard and you, you know, totally goose it like that. 
That was totally for demonstration purposes, may I add. So, you know, it's just become a bit more a bit more stable in that sense, which is a nice improvement. The other thing that has happened is they've made a change to the tires in the compound. If you were familiar with this car previously, honestly, these new soft tires that they've given us feel like the old hard tires do. And that the old hard tires were more predictable. They were just smoother in general. They weren't as twitchy. They were less responsive. Not that they were like overly responsive or anything like that, but these tires are just much better or well behaved in my opinion. So overall I think those two changes, they're not like things that are gonna radically alter you know the car and the way you drive it and the way it feels. But I do think it does have a pretty substantial effect. So we just scrape the wall there. One thing I will say with the skin pack and all of the you know drivers added in here. It does just add so much more immersion to it. Especially when you're like, Reynard Honda OP, please nerf. <laughs> Give me a chance. It's like, oh, gonna use the best car and the best engine. Come on now. <laughs> But honestly, I really like it, you know. Balance of performance has its place, but... You know, I think especially for sim racing... You know, having multiple car performance is not a bad thing. Especially if you're in the right environment. You know, I remember... Way back when I was in a, a Grand Prix Legends fun league. And we basically had an agreement that the guys who were the fastest based upon their GPL rank would be stuck with either like the Cooper or uh, the BRM because those were cars that were, you know, slower. It essentially handicapped their performance whereas only the the slower drivers would have access to like the Lotus 49 if they wanted it, which you might not want if you're a slower driver just because that car was incredibly difficult to drive. Whereas something like the the Ferrari or the Eagle or the Honda in that game were probably actually faster in the hands of a beginner just because they were just substantially easier cars to drive. But, you know, it, it did that thing where it kind of evened out the competition without having to, to try and do things, you know, and you can do the same type of thing here. You know, the difference isn't nearly as much as, as it was in that case, obviously, but, you know, it's half a tenth per lap on most, you know, standard length circuits. So, or, it's half a second. I think I said half a tenth. Uh, it, it's a pretty substantial difference having that extra, extra horsepower, but... Now I want to go ahead and touch on difficulty, grip, forgiveness. This is kind of a, a conversation I apparently apparently waded into. And it, it really kind of irked me because the video I, I did with the initial impressions, someone posted on the forums over at Reason Studios on their forums and like basically tried to say I was saying that the cars were broken or had too much grip or were too easy and it's like no the cars were just too fast and there was a behavior where there was an issue and I'm gonna go ahead and call it the way I see it and that is what it is if you don't like it then it's too bad and, and like it really kind of irked me because you know I've been a Reason Studios fan for a long time I have been very open about that I've had more faith in this game than a lot of people have because I believe in them. Because they've not given me any reason to not believe in them. And you know, it's like, why why have I been a fan? Because their, dry, their cars have always driven really nice, you know? Like, they all make sense, they've all been forgiving, they've all been challenging, they've all 
you know, behave the way you would largely expect them to. Why would I want a car to be unrealistically impossible? That's not what I'm saying when I'm saying that a car just needs to be slower. Those things, those things are not related. And I want to talk about that because people in sim racing don't seem to understand this at all. And it boggles the mind. All right. Now, mind you, I'm not a pro race car driver. I'm not a genius. I didn't even sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night. But grip, difficulty, and forgiveness are all different things. Yeah. They're all independent. They are not really related at all. So, common sense, or common logic, I guess I should say, within the sim racing community is that grip equals ease and forgiveness. How do you explain the instances where back in the day, several years ago now, thank goodness, iRacing was at peak ice racing, where cars were, as soon as you started to slip or spin or slide, well, you would spin because it was impossible to save a car. How do you explain that lack of forgiveness with the fact that oftentimes cars were four, five, six, seven seconds a lap faster than what they should have been doing. Obviously, they had too much grip, but they had zero forgiveness. How does that work out if grip equals forgiveness? Obviously, they don't. You know, and what it really is, the fast drivers spend the most amount of time at the optimal peak amount of slip angle, getting the most out of the car, getting the most out of the tires. That's how the fast guys go fast. Simple as that. Like, if you can just do that all the time, you'll win all the races. Now, of course, the fact is, despite despite it being very simple, it, it's incredibly challenging. And the AI is busy tripping over itself as it's come across a lapped car, apparently. But you can have a thing where you can have a ton of peak grip, but zero forgiveness. And that very well may create difficulty because the window for absolute peak grip is very small. But it doesn't necessarily have to. You know, you could have a car that has a very, very wide window for optimal peak grip. And it would actually be probably pretty easy on a technical basis to go ahead and get the optimal lap time out of it and go as fast as you possibly can because it'd be very forgiving within that window. Now that said, a car could have a very, very small window, but still at the same time have a very forgiving attitude to it because of the fact that maybe the the absolute optimal slip angle and, and loading is just at a very small, small portion. But outside of that, you know, instead of having a very pointy, peaky nature to the tire, you might have a very smooth and rounded nature to it, which would give it that forgiveness. And, and you know, one of the other things is people saying they can just power down out of corners and, you know, full on flat out, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, you can do that. But at the same time, you're going to be going slower. Like, that's not what you want to be doing. <laughs> like, I've had numerous times driving this car where it's very clear that the rear end is squirming around and not in grip. We're just basically spinning the tires, laying rubber, going nowhere fast. It's like, yeah, that looks cool and we're not dying, but why would we want to do that? The idea is that we're going to go as fast as we possibly can. Like, if you're a good driver, you don't want to be counter steering on corner exit. Like, that, that's generally a pretty good indication that you're doing it wrong. You actually want to keep the car composed and not squirming all over the place. And that's the thing that people seem to not understand. And I think I think what it really comes down to is if you go back far enough, Grand Prix Legends, <laughs> Grand Prix Legends <laughs> screwed up sim racing so hard. As we just fling through the chicane there. I think we should. Do we got one more lap? Do we got one more lap or? Okay. Pull that lap active. All right. I was gonna say, 
But no, if you go back to Grand Prix Lap, Grand Prix Legends were, you know, we, the way you drove those cars, everything, you were just constantly always drifting, and that's just how it worked, even if that didn't make any sense at all. But then when you break it down and think about it, it's like, okay, a Lotus 49 has tires that are about 25 feet wide out back. It got little tiny narrow tires up front, you know, the weight distribution and everything like that. Why should that car be an incredibly oversteering, unpredictable, just death trap of a car based upon its principles? It, it, it doesn't make any sense, but because of the limitations of the modeling at the time, that's how it came out. And that's why, for example, you know, the iRacing Lotus 49, Last I drove that thing, you know, it understeers like crazy. And the AI's running over me because they're like, speed it the frick up. This is a cool down lap, not a park in the, the pit entry lap. But like, you know, it's just that thing where it... <laughs> it makes sense in the context of the time, but it has to, to move on from the context of the time, if, it, if that makes any sense. But yeah, if you drive the iRacing version of the Lotus 49, you find that the thing understeers like a dump truck by default. And, you know, it's very easy to overwhelm the tires because it is a difficult car, but it's also got less grip. Less grip doesn't necessarily have to mean that it is an absolute death trap. Because honestly, the, the Lotus 49 in Grand Prix Legends might actually be easier for me to understand than the, the iRacing one the last I drove it, but... Uh, you know, it's it neither here nor there. Sometimes it just works out like that, but I don't know. It just separate grip from difficulty, from forgiveness, and keep them all independent because they are all independent factors. Please. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I bye.